is a huge part of pop culture. So it makes sense that it would influence our media. From American cartoons having an anime inspired art style to straight up Jojo poses and Paw Patrol, you can see just how inspiring anime can be. But what about manga? Because if our cartoons so blatantly take inspiration from anime, then shouldn't our comics take inspiration from manga? Well, there are examples of this happening. From comics that look like manga to comics that borrow manga tropes and even straight up stealing. First off, there are a good number of comics that borrow the manga style. One example that I always think of is Guri Hiru. Now, this is less borrowing the anime style and more using it straight up because Guri Hiru is a Japanese artist team that is located in Sapporo. They have done art for a ton of American comics. They've worked on Power Pack, Avatar The Last Airbender, and my favorite example of their work, Unbelievable Gwenpool. Their art is super colorful and very poppy. I love their work on Gwenpool, and it is the reason why I enjoy that book so much. There are also books that are made specifically to look like manga. In fact, there's a whole company known for making books just like this, and that is Antarctic Press. Antarctic Press was founded in late 1984 by Mark Ripley and Ben Dunn. The company has published many original English language manga, which is the technical term for comics that are inspired by manga. The most popular title published by the company is Ninja High School, which is written and illustrated by Dunn. The series is about high schooler Jeremy Feeple and his two female companions, Asriel and Ichi. Asriel is an alien princess who wants to marry Jeremy a whole lot. Looks like someone has seen to love room. And the other one is Ichi, who is a ninja from Japan who is Jeremy's cousin because his mother was adopted by Ichi's grandfather. She also wants to marry Jeremy because I can't go one month without talking about incest, apparently. As you can see, the series uses a lot of manga tropes. In fact, the whole series is in black and white, just like a manga, which might be to the detriment of the series because I keep trying to read it in the wrong direction. But Ninja High School isn't the only original English manga that Ben Dunn made for Antarctic Press. He also worked on another one called Diesel that is very, very intriguing. Diesel is about our main character whose parent has been affected by a villain in a far-off land, so he goes on a multiple month-long journey with his friends and a dog to defeat him using their powers called Stans- Wait a minute, what am I describing here? Diesel or Stardust Crusaders? Well, the reason for this glaring similarity to JoJo's is because Ben Dunn wanted to bring JoJo's over to America by licensing it officially. But when that fell through, he felt that the next best thing was just to do it himself. Diesel is a one-to-one -one ripoff of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The fight in Diesel is a copy of the Nadal fight, complete with a liquid stand that helps the seated blind user see, and the dog is the one to find the enemy. Even the main character stand, yes, that is seriously what they are called in the book, looks exactly like Star Platinum. The fact that this exists is extremely funny to me. Like, it's so shameless. But the weirdest thing to me is that I'm a JoJo fan, so I can appreciate this for what it is. But I can't help but think of this from the perspective of someone who's never seen JoJo's before. Diesel is only one issue, so it's missing a lot of context and a lot of explanation that would probably be revealed in later issues. But the weird thing is, I don't need this. I know where this is going. I've seen it before. Earlier I mentioned the villain, but in the actual book we don't know who that is or why he's the villain. So, if you're reading this out of context, you don't know who the actual big bad is. But that guy looks like Diho, so I know he's the villain. Same thing with these background characters who we get introduced to all at once. If you're reading this, this seems completely random. Who are these guys? Why are they here? But I know that the Stardust Crusaders are Jodoro, Joseph, Kakuin, Polnareff, and Avdol. Well... We got Jotaro and this guy, who is literally named Joseph, so we need to fill our roster out with three other characters. One Asian dude, one black dude with fire powers, I might add, and one super buff guy. So those were some indie examples of comics inspired by manga, but what about something made by one of the big two? Well, Marvel has actually delved into this on multiple occasions, and the first of which is known as Marvel Mangaverse. 
Funnily enough, the name Mangaverse actually predates the name Spider-Verse, so do with that what you will. Marvel Mangaverse was an attempt on cashing in on the growing popularity of manga in the 2000s. It was a series of books written from 2000 to 2002, and since it was a series of books, it featured a ton of different writers, like Peter David, C.B. Sapolsky, and God damn it, Ben Dunn's back! One of the things I find most interesting about Marvel Mangaverse is that a lot of the issues are written and drawn by the same person. This isn't that common in American comics, but it happens all the time in Japanese manga. So I really love that the inspiration here is going deeper than just what is on the page. And speaking of what's on the page, Marvel Mangaverse takes the characters of the Marvel Universe and puts them in an anime-inspired world. This book wears its inspirations on its sleeve with the look of the characters and even some of the scenes. Look at this shot of this Iron Man armor. This is straight out of Evangelion. And this is literally just a Pikachu in a jar. Plus, the characters all look straight out of 2000s anime, especially Black Widow and Iron Man's sister, Tony Stark. That's Tony with an I because it is short for Antoinette. Tony is the main waifu of the story. The book shows off just how much of a badass she is, but don't worry, there is still a shower scene 17 pages in. There is also Tigra, who I thought was an original character created for this book because Catgirl, but no, she is an existing Marvel character. She is a little annoying in this, being a ride-along character serving Doctor Strange, but hey, she's a huge fan of Ninja High School. You just had to get that one in there, didn't you, Dunn? The female characters all look great, but... The men. The men lead to an overall problem with the series. It can be how you say cringe. Look at Ant-Man's hair. Steve Rogers looks like he's made of plastic and take a guess at who you think this is. It's Namor. And if you don't believe me, look at his feet. The series is pretty earnest in its copying of anime tropes, so it can be a little ridiculous at times, but it is a really good look at what anime was like in the early 2000s, and it can be pretty fun to watch these Marvel characters act out these anime cliches. So maybe check this series out just for the novelty of it. But that wasn't Marvel's only foray into manga-inspired comics, because in 2003, they started an imprint called Tsunami. An imprint is a publishing label that companies will have that will produce books that all have something in common. For example, What If was an imprint that featured books that all were What If scenarios of popular Marvel events. And Tsunami was an imprint that featured books that all had a heavy manga influence. Unlike Mangaverse, these titles weren't a copy or reimagining of manga tropes, rather they borrowed the feel of manga. The titles released under Tsunami were Human Torch, Inhumans, Mystique, Namor, Sentinel, Venom, New Mutants, Wolverine Snicked, Emma Frost, and Runaways, the later of which becoming the most popular title, eventually getting a TV show adaptation. The Tsunami books all had a manga-inspired art style, but still had the feel of an American comic. All the titles were within continuity, and each of them got 12 to 18 issues, except for Wolverine, which was a 5-issue miniseries, and Emma Frost, which only got one issue. If you are a manga fan and want to get into comics, you should definitely check these ones out, especially Runaways. Those were all examples of books that wanted to take the manga style and shove it into American comics. But what about a more subtle approach? Well, let's talk about Tokyo Ghoul. Wait, sorry. Tokyo Ghost. I swear it's a subtle inspiration. Tokyo Ghost is written by Rick Remender with art by Sean Murphy. It follows Led Dent and Debbie Decay, who are constables working in Los Angeles, and in an attempt to free themselves from work, they are going to do one last big job that will take them to the last tech-free country in the world, Japan. Tokyo Ghost is a great book about the world's dependence on technology and the shortening of attention spans in everyday society. But the reason why I'm bringing it up isn't because it's a great book that you should definitely read, but it's because it utilizes a technique that is very uncommon in American comics, but it is used all the time in manga. That is the use of onomatopoeia. Now, obviously, comics use onomatopoeia all the time, but they are reserved more for action sequences. This is because our onomatopoeia is very limited. Onomatopoeia in English is used to describe things with audible sounds, like 
claps, bangs, and beeps. But with the Japanese language, they have onomatopoeia to describe everything, from being sad, which is shun, to staring, which is ji. So in manga, oftentimes there will be a lot of small onomatopoeia everywhere that will be used to describe small gestures. This is used in Tokyo Ghost quite a bit. There is a scene when Dent and Debbie first get to Japan, where Dent is grabbing for his gun, and when he does so, there is the word grab next to his hand when he grabs his gun, and the word point next to his hand when he points the gun. This is not a thing that happens in American comics, but as I explained earlier, it happens a ton in manga. When I was reading this for the first time, I had to do a double take, because I'm used to seeing this a lot in manga, but not in comics, and I had to remind myself that I was reading a comic. This was actually what inspired me to make this video, and I'm glad I did, because I learned a ton, and I discovered a lot of things that combine two of my favorite things. And I hope you enjoyed this video as well, and I hope you're enjoying Comic Book Monk as a whole. So make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and as always, sayonara.